Hello and welcome back to another RAI Caregiver Moment. My name is Kayana Church. For those of you who don't know me, uh, a lot of people like to call me Mr. KC. For those of you who do, who am I? I'm just another big hearted caregiver. I'm also the founder and administrator of Reliable Aid Inc. Uh, what we like to do is we like to give back to the community. We like to showcase a lot of the big hearted caregivers that's running around uh, uh, giving this big hearted care out. And um, today we're with a very, very, very special person. And a lot of people say we look alike, so we're really close. <laughs> I would like to introduce you to her. She knows 100% of the nurse practitioner information. She knows 1,000% of uh, being a big hearted caregiver. She knows what it's about to see 15 patients a day. Been there and done that on multiple jobs. And she's a fun person to be with. This is Denna Walden. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good. Would you like to tell the people anything about yourself when we get into it? My name is Adana. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner, um, which is basically the nursing side of a psychiatrist. So we do similar jobs. Um, so we do basically the same thing as psychiatrists, except we don't do surgery. Uh -huh. um, so we work with the mentally ill, people with behavioral health problems. What got you into that? That's, that's, that's a heavy field. I went back to school to become a nurse. That was like my third degree. Um, but I wanted to become a nurse because I thought it, you know, I like helping people. Um, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to have a good work-life balance. You know, nurses typically work three days a week, 12 hour shifts. So I figured I'll be home more with my child. Um, but anybody who works as a nurse knows that that's not typically how it goes. Um, so I worked as a nurse for, I don't know, about six or seven years as an RN. Um, and I started out in corrections, and then I went into drug and alcohol. So both um, both of those sites or um, specialties, there's a lot of mental health issues. So, um, and my intention when I went to nursing school was not to be a bedside nurse. I didn't want to just do hands-on okay. nursing. Um, I planned on eventually going back and getting another degree. So I went ahead and went back um, and I ended up going into psych because I was working with so many people that had so many mental health problems. But it was a good field to get into. Mm. So. And that's where you are currently, right? Yes, yeah, so currently I work as a nurse practitioner in a correctional facility um, and a drug and alcohol facility. A couple other little side gigs too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so those are my two main jobs. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else that you want to accomplish with this with this super caregiving? So I don't think I'm getting job. any more degrees. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I mean, right now I'm doing a lot of patient care. Eventually, I may want to move into more like a policy type position because I feel like there's a lot of things that need to change on an administrative or a systems level versus you know what we can do on an individual level. So. Mm. Kind of what external struggles do you think may uh, prevent you from achieving something like that? That's big. Well, first you have to find a position that allows you to do that kind of policy work. Um, it's easy to find a job where you're just, you know, managing medications or therapy or something like that. It's harder to find a position where you actually can have an impact on a system, right? Whether you're working in administration or some people go um, the political route and, you know, run for Congress or different things like that. But it's, it's, there's much, it's a much smaller pool of opportunities to make those kind of systems level changes. Wow. So wow. That's probably the biggest hurdle is, is getting into one of those positions. Wow. Mm -hmm. What do you think some internal hurdles may be? I'm tired. <laughs> Help, helping, people is, helping people is a lot of work. Helping people is a lot You're of work. You're listening to other people's problems and concerns all day. It can be a little draining. Wow. So, you know, you personal blind, care. Blind, right? I do. So, you know, you have to make sure you take good um, good care of yourself as well so that you can help other people. What was the biggest wall or hurdle that you faced? I guess for me, it was just a a balancing act because I was still working full time. I was in school full time. I'm a single parent. Um, so those all, you know, come with a lot of responsibility and time restrictions. So you have to, you know, set aside time to study and set aside time to go 
to your clinicals and still be, you know, home in time to cook dinner and go to the soccer games and stuff like that. So just kind of, you know, making sure that you plan accordingly. Otherwise, you miss everything. Absolutely. What big epiphany did you did you get? I feel like just in general, there's a big need in mental health. Um, there's a lot of people um, who need somebody else to either advocate for them or help them through a tough time. Um, and I'm one of those people that, you know, I could just be in the grocery store and people want to tell me their whole life story. Mm -hmm. So I figured, you know, might as well make a career out of it. What did you do? So, um, like I said, originally mental psych, um, mental health was not what I intended to, to do, even though I knew I wanted to get another degree. Um, somebody, one of my now mentors had suggested it. Um, she told me about it and I did my research and three months later I was in school. Sure. So I've always been the kind of person when I make a decision to do something, like it gets done, <laughs> the faster the better. Man, was that the uh, right? Yeah, yeah, you actually <laughs> taught me about that. Was that the biggest conflict that you probably uh, went through trying to get it, get it done? Uh, well, I had to find a school that allowed me to go from an associate's degree to a master's degree because I didn't want to get another bachelor's degree since I already had a master's in another field. So I wanted to get um, through school, a good school, as fast as possible. So finding a school that offered the program that I wanted. Um, was a little bit of a challenge. It took a little while, but wasn't too bad. <laughs> you shaved a lot off the top. Yeah, the people yeah, too. Because yeah. <laughs> I know, I know the personal story. It wasn't in and out. You make it sound really good. <laughs> so, okay, fast forward. What was the end result of, of, of all those degrees? What did you get? Um, so my, um, so I have a master's in nursing with a concentration in psychiatric mental health. Mm. Um, so I'm a board certified psych mental health nurse practitioner. Wow. Yep. Wow. Do you prescribe medicine? I do. Um, mostly for things like um, anxiety, depression. Though I also, you know, see kids for ADHD. We deal with mood disorders. A little bit of everything. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. What? transformation because you've obviously come a long way i mean you've been the smartest person i know for a long time but <laughs> for the people that don't know you you've obviously come a long way what transformation did you have to make inside yourself to be able to get this person that we see in front of the camera today um i would say the biggest uh kind of thing i had to overcome is i'm not a naturally like extroverted outgoing person but in order you to um, be successful, you have to kind of step outside of your comfort zone and be willing to, you know, ask for help when it's needed or get advice from other people. Something's not quite going the way that it seems and nobody will know if you don't tell them. So you have to talk to people. Um, so that was kind of a big change for me, having to, you know, step out of your comfort zone and, and ask for help. Sure. You heard it here. <laughs> what do you think your biggest takeaway is with, uh, your importance uh, to being a caregiver? Um, like, if you have a passion for helping people, um, then you gotta follow your passion. Um, there'll be a lot of people that say, oh, don't do it, or, you know, for this reason or that reason. But at the end of the day, if you know you were put here to help others, then that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. And that's what we're doing. Uh, at this time, we would like to, oh, hold on a second. Bam! <laughs> What'd that say, y'all? <laughs> Big hearted caregiver award. We would like, on behalf of the whole RAI caregiver community, we would like to offer you the Big hearted caregiver award. Hi. Mr. Denna Wallen. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yep. All right, y'all. <laughs> Smash the wild face if you even in New Jersey. I know this is this is all a rebroadcast when you see it, but smash the wild face. Let us know that you're in the building. If you think that uh, caregiving is a good thing, let us know about that. You know how you know if if if, if you feel like uh, you want to nominate somebody for the next big hearted caregiver award, let us know about that. Uh, 302-689-3240.
302-689-3240. If you want to learn how to be a nurse practitioner, listen to what she says. I don't know if it's going to be that easy because she, <laughs> she masters everything I have ever seen her done. So <laughs> call me, 302-689-3240. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you.